erythropoiesis is the process of origin, development and maturation of red blood cells. The site of erythropoiesis where all these changes take place changes with age. In early weeks of embryonic life, they are synthesized from yolk sac, from the mesenchyme of yolk sac. And this stage of uh, synthesis of RBCs is known as mesoblastic stage when we are referring to the site where erythropoiesis is taking place. Now in this stage, primitive kind of RBCs are synthesized and these are actually nucleated. Then after first trimester of pregnancy, they are produced mainly in liver and also somewhat in spleen and lymph nodes and because the major site of synthesis of RBCs is liver, this stage is known as hepatic stage. Then during last month of gestation and after birth up to 20 years of age, site of erythropoiesis shifts to bone marrow of all the bones of the body. And after 20 years what happens, marrow of long bones becomes fatty. So basically it becomes inactive except upper part of humerus and femur bones. So after 20 years of age, RBCs are synthesized only in the marrow of membranous bones and in the upper ends of humerus and femur. So what are these membranous bones? You can simply remember this as bones in central axis of your body that is skull, sternum, ribs, vertebrae and pelvis. Now what is the significance of knowing all this that where this erythropoiesis is taking place? Well, first of all you see in case of hemolysis when a lot of RBC breakdown is taking place then in that case body compensates by producing RBCs even more. So then what happens that there is expansion of the site of erythropoiesis. So for example in a skull there is expansion of the site of erythropoiesis and in such cases when we take skull x-rays we see something known as hair on end appearance which are basically vertical striations of calcified spicules and these are perpendicular to the surface of the bone and it looks like hair is standing on end and this is very commonly seen in children and adolescents with hemolytic anemias. Not only that, when excessive RBC synthesis is required, the site of synthesis may even involve the fetal site that is liver and spleen for RBC synthesis and this is known as extramedullary hematopoiesis. So in case of hemolytic anemia, there is extramedullary hematopoiesis in liver and spleen and this leads to enlargement of liver and spleen that is hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. Then, there is another significance of knowing the site of erythropoiesis. See, sometimes in cases of anemia, we need to examine the bone marrow to determine the cause. So if we know where exactly the synthesis is taking place, we can take the sample from there. So for example, in adults, it is mainly the membranous bone. So we take the sample from either the sternum or the iliac crest for examining the bone marrow sample. Fine. So that was about the site of erythropoiesis. Now coming to that how the development and maturation of RBCs is taking place. Well first of all all blood cells develop from pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell and as the name of the cell suggests it is pluripotent hematopoietic that means it has the potency potent means potency to produce multiple types pluris multiple types of hematic cells, hematopoietic, isn't it? So pluripotent hematopoietic cell can produce multiple types of blood cells. Now, this cell can multiply and form many of its own types, right? So it can form other pluripotent hematopoietic cells. But to form a particular type of blood cell, it is important that some of the cells which are formed after multiplication, they should differentiate towards the lineage of forming that particular blood cell. So when we are talking about red blood cells, some of the cells should differentiate to RBC lineage. So two things that uh, these cells, hematopoietic stem cells can self renew and they can differentiate to particular lineage. So this differentiation to a particular lineage is based on the presence of certain interleukins and growth factors. So there is interleukin 3 is there, then uh, interleukin 6, then uh, there is uh, 
granulocyte, monocyte, uh, colony stimulating factor is there which causes its differentiation to the myeloid lineage. The other lineage is uh, lymphoid lineage which will produce lymphocytes. So these RBCs are produced from the myeloid lineage. So with this differentiation there is production of committed cells which can form cells of the myeloid lineage and the cells of the myeloid lineage include erythrocytes, uh, megakaryocytes, uh, then other WBCs apart from lymphocytes. So that means that this particular cell now has to differentiate further into different different lineages. So there will be differentiation towards a line to form the WBCs, right? So the other line we will discuss, so that forms a colony forming unit. So first one which we are talking, it is colony forming unit is plain which can differentiate into formation of leukocytes and uh, the other one differentiates into formation of uh, either erythrocytes or megakaryocytes. So it, this is known as colony forming unit erythrocyte slash megakaryocyte or CFUEM in short. So as the term suggests it will further differentiate into CFUE that is colony forming unit erythrocyte and CFUM that is colony forming unit megakaryocyte. And obviously the differentiation to different lineages depends on the presence of different types of growth factors. Fine. Now this CFU further differentiates into various stages. So first stage is proerythroblast or pronormoblast. Then there is a basophilic erythroblast or also known as early normoblast. Then uh, there is polychromatophilic erythroblast or uh, intermediate normoblast. And then finally there is orthochromatic uh, erythroblast or also known as uh, late normoblast. And finally, there is reticulocyte formation. So this reticulocyte enters into blood and matures into RBCs. Now, each of these stages have certain characteristics. So let us see the characteristics of each of these stage. So first of all, remember that as different stages progress, there is decrease in size of the cell. So this one is the largest from 25 micrometers. It comes to 7.2 micrometers which is the size of the RBC. So cell size decreases. Size of the nucleus also decreases and ultimately it disappears. We will see in which stage it disappears. And there is increase in the cytoplasm. So nuclear cytoplasmic ratio that is how much nucleus is there and how much cytoplasm there. If we see the ratio that nuclear cytoplasmic ratio decreases because nucleus content is decreasing. So that is the first thing you should remember, common thing. The next common thing you should remember that all these stages can multiply and differentiate. So they can divide also and they can undergo differentiation also until the stage of late normoblast. So this late normoblast doesn't has the capacity of multiplying. It can only differentiate into further cells right so after this the number of cells is not going to increase fine now let's see the characteristic of each of these cells first of all proethroblast you see as i said the proethroblast will be a very large cell around 25 micrometers and its nucleus is also very large and it is almost completely occupying the cell so it just fills the cell and there is only a very small rim of basophilic cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is also blue in color. Then the next stage is a basophilic erythrocyte or early normoblast. So as the name suggests, it is basophilic because the cytoplasm again stains blue and the size of the nucleus will decrease little bit. Then intermediate normoblast or polychromatophilic uh, erythroblast what we said, you see the name says polychromatophilic. So it is getting stained with multiple colors, polychrome, okay. So in this stage what happens that the hemoglobin appears in the cytoplasm and that is why it stains with both blue and red stains. So that is why the name polychromatophilic. So hemoglobin appears in intermediate normoblast. So the size of the nucleus is decreased further, size of the cell is decreased further and hemoglobin has appeared in this stage. Then the next is late normoblast and this is basically acidophilic because in this stage the nucleus is expelled out and the hemoglobin almost fills the cell completely. So that is late normoblast and as I told earlier this cell does not have the capacity to multiply also. Then comes the reticulocyte. 
In reticulocyte, there is only remnants of RNA which are present as the nucleus has been thrown out. And uh, this uh, remnant of RNA forms a reticulum in the cell and that is why the name reticulocyte. Finally, it is the reticulocyte stage which actually enters into the circulation and matures into RBC in the circulation in 1 to 2 days and these RBCs become biconcave in shape. So those are the various stages of uh, erythropoiesis and the characteristics of various stages. Now from proerythroblast to mature RBCs it takes approximately 7 days. So if you see if erythropoietin is given which is a hormone which acts on uh, the RBC precursors. So in certain diseases it is administered. So if erythropoietin is given for treatment, you can understand that uh, this CPU which acts on precursors that is this proethroblast, it will take minimum one week to act for RBC number to increase. So that was all about the erythropoiesis. For the factors affecting erythropoiesis, I have made another video, the link for which I have given in the description section below, you can check that out too. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.